Hi everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to my ICT Concepts video on liquidity voids and how to use them. Liquidity voids aren't talked about very often and I think this is because they're not an entry technique like the rest of ICT's PD arrays. But understanding liquidity voids is important if you're using ICT's fair value gap or if you're looking for high probability exits for your trades. So if you're struggling to understand liquidity voids and how to use them, then this video is for you. But before we jump into today's video, there's something you should know. I work really hard at putting these videos together for you and I know that they provide a lot of value, but you need to understand that these videos aren't free. Now the great news is that you don't need to pay with any money. All you need to do is subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like. That's it. Let's call this our gentleman's agreement or our ladies understanding. This is our social contract because I can't look over your shoulder and make sure you're doing it. I just need to trust that you will. And so in return, I'll keep making high quality valuable videos for you and all you need to do is keep liking and subscribing. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me and besides everyone else is doing it and so you should too. Lastly, if you'd like to hear more from me and join a community of like-minded traders, then make sure you check out the link in the description where you can subscribe to my free weekly newsletter and to join our Discord. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump into today's video. Today's ICT Concepts video is on liquidity voids, and we'll just quickly go through a brief outline of what we're gonna be covering in today's video. So we'll start with PD arrays and the liquidity void, and then we'll go into what actually is a liquidity void. And we'll follow that up with the concepts behind using a liquidity void, and then we'll finish up by covering how we can use liquidity voids, including some practical examples to help to consolidate our learning. So a liquidity void is one of ICT's PD arrays, and as we can see from our dealing range, above equilibrium we have our premium, and below equilibrium we have our discount. And so above equilibrium, so in a premium, we would have our bearish liquidity voids, and below equilibrium in a discount, we would have our bullish liquidity voids. Next, we're gonna cover what is a liquidity void, and we're gonna look at both a bearish and a bullish example, but we'll start with our bearish liquidity void first. And so our bearish liquidity void is a range in price delivery where the sell side is delivered in long one-sided ranges or down close candles. And so if we just look at the diagram that I've put in the slide here, you can see we have a range. So we have this area where price is in balance or in equilibrium. So we often call this an area of consolidation. And then following that area of consolidation, we'll get displacement. So we get price imbalance, and you can see we get these long one-sided ranges, so these down-close candles, away from the area of consolidation. Now when this happens, we actually have a void of buy-side liquidity. And so this is called a sell-side imbalance, buy-side inefficiency. And that's because price delivery is all one-sided. So in this case, it's all bearish, so it's all sell-side delivery, and there's no buy-side. And so when there is a void of buy-side liquidity, and there's only sell-side, this is what you'll hear ICT refer to as a SIBI, a sell-side imbalance, buy-side inefficiency. So our bullish liquidity void is, as you'd expect, essentially the opposite of our bearish liquidity void. So it's a range in price delivery where the buy side is delivered in long one-sided ranges or up-close candles. So once again, we have price imbalance, so we're in a range or a consolidation, so price is in equilibrium. Then we get our price imbalance, so this displacement, and this is where we have only buy side being delivered. So in this example, we actually have a void of sell side liquidity. And so in this instance, this is what we call a BISI or a buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency because only the buy side is being delivered and there's no sell side. So now that we understand what a liquidity void is, it's important that we understand the concepts behind using a liquidity void. So we'll start with our bearish liquidity void first. And so you'll recall from our last slide is we have price imbalance or in equilibrium. So this is our range or our consolidation. And then we have price being knocked out of that range or that consolidation. And you can see we get an imbalance or a displacement where there's a complete void of buy side liquidity. Now the reason why this is important is the only market participants that have the firepower to knock price out of equilibrium is smart money. And so when they're in the market, we obviously want to take notice. On the flip side of that, 
for our bullish liquidity void, it's the same mechanism. So again, we have price in equilibrium and we have an imbalance or a displacement, but in this case, we have a complete void of sell side liquidity. So once again, we have to ask ourselves who has the firepower to knock price out of equilibrium. And again, it's smart money. So when they're participating, we want to take notice because they're the only market participant that has the capability to push price out of a range or a consolidation. So now that we know what a liquidity void is and we understand the concept behind a liquidity void, the next logical question is how do we use a liquidity void in our trading? So once again, we'll start with our bearish liquidity void example. Now, the important thing to remember is that we have smart money participating in the market. Now they've pushed price out of equilibrium and the reason why they've done that is obviously to move price to an area that's advantageous to them. So that's gonna allow them to accumulate more positions in a different region or they just understand that they need to push price in a different direction which allows them more time to build up their positions and get set in the marketplace. And so what that tells us is that price will typically want to rebalance this inefficiency or refill this void of liquidity. Now, the important thing to remember is that there's no fixed time limit as to when this will occur. It could happen quite quickly. Sometimes you'll see it in the market, you'll get a rebalance almost straight away. And sometimes it can take you know days or weeks or even months, depending on what time frame that it's occurred. And so in this example, what we would be looking for is other PD arrays to use to get set in the opposite direction. So in this example, we have our bearish liquidity void. We've had the market displace lower, and then we get a reconsolidation. So we have stops building up underneath these lows. And in this example, what you can see is price pushes below the sell side liquidity, these relative equal lows. We get our bullish fair value gap. We get a market structure shift and then price takes off and rebalances this inefficiency over here. So that's just an example of how we could take advantage of this inefficiency, understanding that at some point in the future, it will be filled in. We can then look for setups using other PD arrays to go long and then take advantage of that fill at some point in the future. Similarly, our bullish liquidity void is the same, just obviously in the opposite direction. So smart money has moved price out of consolidation, so out of equilibrium, and it's pushed it to a higher price. This is obviously allowing them to get set to the short side at either higher prices or just accumulate larger positions. So once again, we get a reaccumulation occurring at a higher price, and we can take advantage of that by getting set to the short side and looking to refill that efficiency later in the future. So in this example, you can see we have a consolidation and we have stops being created above this buy side liquidity, these relative equal highs. We get a rate of those stops and then a market structure shift which gives us an imbalance. And in this case, we're looking at a bearish fair value gap as our setup mechanism. Price trades back into that. And then price trades lower, filling in all of this inefficiency, rebalancing these imbalances. And so that's how we can take advantage of understanding that this liquidity void is present by getting set in the same direction as smart money with the expectation that this price imbalance or this inefficiency will be filled in at some point in the future. So we'll go through some examples now. And the first one we're gonna look at is Bitcoin. Now, in this particular example, we have our bearish liquidity void. So we have a complete absence in this example of buy side liquidity. So we have our SIBIs here and we have price displaced all the way down. And then we have a period of consolidation. So you can see this period of consolidation lasts you know, many weeks. And in this period we have a bullish fair value gap set up. Now, even though we have the setup here and there's obviously a few opportunities to get set, you can see the market takes quite a long time before it actually rebalances all of this inefficiency here. So in this example, we would use our bullish fair value gap setup, so our standard three candle formation. There's obviously a lot of opportunities to get set. And you can see the market basically whipsaws above these levels and below. And it's at this period here and here where we would have the previous stops taken out before we get this 
rally to the upside. And as I said, this has taken quite a long time to occur, but this is obviously the opportunity which has been created by smart money. So price has been driven down, which gives them the opportunity to accumulate these long positions down here before driving price back up higher. And you can see in this example, by using this bullish fair value gap as our setup, we would have got an over 5R return. We obviously would have had to have been quite patient because we could have been sitting in that trade for quite a while. But we're using obviously the probability in understanding that these SIBIs at some point will be filled in to our advantage and using that as part of our exit methodology. In our final example, we have a bullish liquidity void on the S&P 500. So in this example, we can see that price has been driven up. So we have a void of sell side liquidity. We have a buy side imbalance. So this is our BISI. And in this example, you can see we have price trade higher. So we take out any stops that are residing above this level. We get a displacement and our bearish fair value gap. So that's quite clear there. We trade back up into it a number of times. You can see we get a big displacement here. And this happens a number of times before price eventually fills in all of this inefficiency. And you can see we actually end up trading below this swing low here. So once again, we know that smart money is in play. They've driven price higher, which allows them to get set in short positions at these higher levels. So we're obviously looking to trade where they're trading. So we're taking our short position here using a bearish fair value gap as our entry mechanism. And we can see by doing that, once again, we'd have to be quite patient because this trade has taken you know, a number of days to unfold. But we can see that would have given us a quite handy 3.29 R return. Thanks for watching my video on liquidity voids and how to use them. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you're able to incorporate liquidity voids into your trading and your analysis. Don't forget our gentleman's agreement or our ladies understanding. I've done my part and now it's time for you to do yours. Lastly, if you'd like to hear more from me and join a community of like-minded traders, then make sure you click on the link in the description, which will allow you to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter and to join our Discord. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.